All right, hold on to the edge of your seats because we're going to start modeling some pants. And uh, I'll try and fill in all this empty space. And pants aren't the most exciting thing to sculpt, but uh, trying to make it as exciting as possible. You can see here I'm masking out his legs where the pants are going to go. And he's going to have a... I know those are pants. Capri pants? Pantaloons? Hosa? And here I am uh, trying to unmask as much as possible because when you extract, uh, what you'll see here actually, I went ahead and extracted, which we went over in part one, that technique. But um, when I show the extraction, you'll see little bits and pieces left behind, which I was trying to avoid, but one quick way to do that is to control shift just the pants and then just go down to delete hidden under the, under the Soto menu. And here I went into transparent mode. So I can uh, pull out that geometry that I'm going to need. And, uh, okay, just making some pants. And since this is a separate sub tool, um, you can kind of just sculpt with the standard brushes, kind of pull it out over his, um, over his legs. Using the move brushes to get the pants out of his geometry, his body geometry, as much as possible. And just keep moving them around until it looks right. Some low rise jeans. And here I've got the smooth modifier turned off again while I divide because I, you know, I don't want it to mush up on me. And cloth is one of those things where, you know, when I was on the body sculpting, I, you know, I just wanted you to make sure that you, uh, you know, only went you only subdivided when you actually had to and you worked out all your problems but cloth is one of those things where sometimes you do want to subdivide a couple times and then put in things like seams or clasps or eyes and you'll see that uh, in just a minute so working your mesh completely uh, at every subdivision level isn't necessarily true in all cases Hard edge and cloth probably being those exceptions. In this video, you'll see some trial and error. Um, I don't have any cloth reference up. I'm just kind of uh, doing it till it feels right. But by all means, you know, if you're doing a business suit or whatever, uh, grab a photograph if you want to. And, you know, the thing about cloth that you want to keep in mind is, um, a lot of cloth you'll see uh, people sometimes have a tendency to um, make it make the wrinkles so that they're kind of loopy and they're kind of soft and curvy when in fact cloth kind of hangs in more straight lines um, so I would say error on the side of uh, more rectilinear lines than big soft loopy lines because big soft loopy lines kind of look melty you know and cloth tends to hang in more straight lines and then curve sharply away and here I'm doing a lot of masking and inflating. Mask out, invert your mask by control clicking out there and inflate. Another technique we went over in part one. And then do a little bit of cleanup with the lazy mouse and the standard brush. Again, the hotkey for that lazy mouse is L. And here I stored a morph target and I'm using the layer brush to kind of give that waistband a little more uh, detail, a little more interest, interesting look. And most of it, I, I know uh, with the idea I have in my head that most of his pants are going to be hidden, so I'm not going, you know, super crazy with his pants. This is more for you than it is for the actual final product. So that you can, so I can say that I sculpted pants on this demonstration. Sell millions. And again, as you see here, you know, Relatively straight lines. But the cloth wrinkles. And as I work down towards the bottom, you'll see even more that uh, 
you know, I'm not having big loopy curvy cloth wrinkles. It's, um, you know, hangs straight and then turns. And I'm just trying to work out uh, how the wrinkles are going to go from the sides to the back and then back to the front again and how those are all going to work together. It'll look a little bit funky uh, until I get what I like, you know, but I'm just kind of playing with it. And the wrinkles kind of dictate what kind of cloth it is as well. You've got some really big, thick, uh, heavy looking wrinkles. You know, it's probably going to be more of a, a burlapy type material, whereas silk will have very different types of wrinkle, types of wrinkle patterns. And there's books uh, on cloth techniques. Um, and of course, just, you know, using reference. Get it to look right. And he's going to have kind of chaps on. Um, actually, his butt's going to have kind of a leather area. We'll get to that in just in a minute. But the wrinkles are uh, are bunching where they normally would, you know. They kind of gather in certain areas and kind of lay across certain other areas. But, you know, you, you've seen a pair of pants worn by a human before, so I'm not telling you anything new. Use your eyes. <laughs> and those, you know, the wrinkles are looking a little bit funky now, but, you know, just kind of a process. Looks weird. Change it. Fix it. You know, and I'm not sculpting a beautiful pair of pants. Um, for a lot of this DVD, it's all about uh, getting it done, getting it in. If I uh, if I want to do a beautiful pair of pants DVD, then that's when I'll I'll really shine. But for now, it's more about uh, getting it good enough. We'll say that. Especially since most of it's going to be covered by boots and straps. But I also don't want to have a ugly pair of sculpted pants for you to look at. Make me look like an idiot, so I try and do a good enough job, I suppose. Here I am putting the seams in finally, now that we're at a certain certain subdivision level. And I cut in some some of those V notches. I'm having a a really German looking pair of pants for some reason. I don't know exactly why I would I think they're German looking, but I don't know. <laughs> they have a German feel to me. Again, just refining the wrinkles as I subdivide. Uh subdividing with smooth uh turned on on cloth can sometimes have that melting effect again. So you want to go in and kind of crispen up some of those cloth lines. And I extracted these pants. Um, you could actually take the low subdivision level into your favorite 3D program and copy that geometry off and uh, extrude those faces into their own pair of pants and then bring them as a subtool if you wanted to. Whatever technique works for you. So again, uh, using lazy mouth. Uh, to make those seams. I'm not being overly careful. Uh, again, getting it done. Good enough. But I do go and move, use the move tool and the pinch tool to kind of uh, make the lines a little sharper and even out my strokes. I don't have the world's steadiest hand, so. <laughs> Lazy mouse helps though. And then here I'm using the move tool and then the pinch tool to kind of sharpen up that detail. You know, those graphics. And here I'm going to make kind of some big rough stitching. 
and again even uh even this falls into uh good enough mask invert the mask um hold down shift and smooth and then use the flatten brush to get rid of that seam and then inflate and then over and then now what i'm doing is using the lazy brush to kind of pull one side of that that loop out so it looks like the one's crisscrossing over the other and if you really wanted to you know you subdivide and make little metal eyelets you know but for the purposes of this dvd uh this is more than good enough especially considering what the final product is going to be it's probably not even going to be seen on the box And I intentionally opened that one one area where he uh, maybe popped a seam. And the exact same thing on the outside. You could also, uh, in lieu of this, use um, what we went over in part one, which is using uh, the tracks or uh, the roll under the stroke menu. And you could actually make an alpha in fact, I think they have one, actually. Maybe I should have done that. I think they have an alpha that's actually a, a lot like this, where it's a, a seam down the middle and actually crisscrossing uh, stitch pattern. And using those brushes or that uh, stroke roll and making your own alpha. Again, techniques we went over in part one. Uh, you could actually probably roll those down the side of his legs. I went the hard way, but I was able to get him exactly where I wanted him to. So sometimes the brute force hard way is is the best way. And just doing a little bit of detail cleanup here. Make it look like they're kind of going into the cloth. And I'm not, again, I'm not going crazy on these pants, you know. They're not going to be the main focus of this guy. So I'm picking and choosing my battles here. Because that leather part I was talking about earlier, where if you do maybe riding pants, reinforced butt, for a, a lot of sitting. And again, that'll come into play when we texture him, when we poly paint him, that'll be more of a dark leather. And the rest of his pants will be a, probably a light leather. Here's his front cod piece. Protect his more sensitive parts. Uh, there I just did a drag dot with a brush alpha just to kind of get some quick rivets on there. And I don't think that I'll actually ever be seen in the final product, so don't spend a lot of time on that. Okay, so there I deleted the previously stored morph target and stored another one. And I'm going to grab cloth. And this is actually probably a step farther than I would probably ever really take it in real life uh, but just for the hell of it make a new layer say choose the drag rect brush and then grab the cloth brush alpha that I imported I'm just dragging willy-nilly uh, that brush that uh, cloth onto his pants and then I went to the switch underneath the morph target menu and now I'm using the morph brush to morph in the morph in the cloth texture uh, exactly where I need it and because we're on a layer while we're doing this We'll go back up to the top after we're done morphing in the areas that we do want to have this texture on. And, uh, you know, you can you can modify it. You can punch up the layer detail and make it really heavy cloth texture, or you can punch it down and make it barely noticeable. But as to whether you would ever really need a, a fine cloth pattern in your project, you know, that kinda, it's kind of project dependent. If you're going to bake this out to a 128 map, then don't bother. But uh, if you're making a movie about these pants, then maybe maybe you do. Uh, here, uh, just for the demonstration purposes, it doesn't end up being in the final model, but I go ahead and mask out a piece of this cloth. And what we're going to do is we're going to invert this mask 
and then whatever is unmasked, I'm going to hit the hide point button. And since this is R2, it's actually still under the masking menu. In R3, and this is important, uh, R3, and probably later, it's going to be under the visibility menu. So just keep that in mind.